I ever received, the first rap tape I ever got. My mom gave me Cool Mo D. The How You Like Me Now? Right. That, with, damn, and, it was crazy. It was, that was the first one I like bought with my, my, my own money, so there you go. It's, yo, man, I mean, crazy. Yeah. and Cool Mo D won the first recorded rap battle, which was against- LL Cool J. Oh, Busy oh, B. Busy B. Busy and B. Then, and then, but- uh, And then LL came at him. Oh, then he started talking about LL on that album cover. Yeah, How You album. Like Me Now was uh, a shot at LL Cool J, and, and then, he's running over the Kango. Real, yeah, the Kango. That's why that. I bought it, because I was like, wow, this guy's running over LL's Kango? Like, wow. That's that's crazy. You know, when you're a 10-year-old, you're like, damn. Right. Like, wow, you really going at this dude. <laughs> that's disrespectful. And then, um, but Wild Wild West was my joint. I love that song. And it's one of the first songs I remember where country elements were used in hip hop. They're yeah. dressed, they're straight up looking like ghetto cowboys in there. And those shades too, man. Yeah. I think he's pre MC Hammer with those shades. Yeah, yeah, Mo D had the crazy shades. Then he had like, go see the doctor before this. He had, uh, and then after this, he had, I go to work. Let's go to the That was phone a long line. time ago. Guns, we don't like to use them. Unless our enemies choose them. <laughs> Yeah, he was, was also uh, in the uh, Treacherous Three, so he's actually in one of those groups that you're talking about, those real early yeah cats that are just a little bit you know past our, a little bit before us. But he was actually in the Treacherous Three, and then as he's described it plenty of times, love writing rhymes more than the party aspect, the money aspect, and the drug aspect, and so his career went forward, and the rest of the group didn't. Yeah, the problem with Mo D is is his. Like if you li- if you listen to Mo D rhyme, it's got a very his 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 delivery is more dated than uh, even a Big Daddy Kane's or or, or, Rakim. or a Rakim. Um eight 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 seven four two three three four five eight 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 seven four two three three four five. Let's go to uh, Kimberly in Mississippi. Yes, it's Kimberly. Go ahead. Okay, I used to love. Eric B. and Rakim, I ain't no joke. Like in 86, I mean, when that came out, it was already, you know, I'm from the South, Mississippi. I just thought I was a whole dude when that song came out. Yeah, this was, this this whole album right here. Like, I, this, yeah, the Paid in Full album is like a right. must have. Yeah. I have that on two of my walls in my house, the album cover. I mean, I'm a female and I have it still up in my room. And they was like, that was the other one too. Like they was really like, they was getting like the the bootleg Gucci shit and had yes. had had the had the track suits right. and shit. I mean, you know, one of the name brand stuff. You know, you could wear any motherfucking thing and it was straight. You know, yeah. you made it look good. You made the shit look good. They definitely had super gold ropes back then, though the Dookie ropes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Woo. Yo, so the story that I heard about this was Eric B was supposed to do, he was supposed to do some shit with Freddie Fox, and Freddie Fox was running late, and Rockem was there, and he was like, "Yo, you want to get on?" And like that's how Rockem was yeah, brought on. Isn't yeah. that crazy? That's crazy. It's fucking nuts. But yeah, like, um, I, I really think that like that this is, this was. I was in the fifth grade when this came out. Oh, so, wow. and like you, you can hear Nas. Like Nas is definitely fucking influenced by this dude. Right. Um, and I don't even think Eric B could fucking DJ. I think he just. I think other people actually did the cuts, but mm. Eric B was just a good businessman and like muscle. Right. So. And a good talker, good speed game. Every time I was watching a house party. Yeah. This weekend. It's on Amazon for free. If anybody got Amazon, you can watch the classic rap battle on House Party. And Chill, don't bump the table. Right. Kid was biting Rakim's flow like crazy. There's so many cats who was using this style after Rakim came out with it. I read somewhere that he got his shit from uh, Mother Goose. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. That's, I read it, but like you know, yeah. don't. Don't hold me to it because I did a lot of drugs. <laughs> right. Done a lot of drugs in my life. Like Dude, a grudge. So. There was a rumor for a long time that Rakim wrote Will Smith's Summertime. Recently he came out and said he didn't do it, but there was a rumor for a while that if you listen to Will Smith's Summertime, he has that same that style, same, same flow. Yeah, that same. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, this whole album, and even his second album, like, and he was able to come back, he was able to, like, come back fucking damn near 20 years later and have, uh, I think, I forgot the, I forgot his, uh, he had, he had a, he had a, a fucking, a hit in 2000s, you know. He was on, I think he had the Truth Hurts song. He was on that song with Truth Hurts with Dr. Dre. Yeah, he was on that bitch. And then he had his own deal, but I can't remember. The then he had 18th Letter. Right before that, he had 18th Letter. Yeah, I should and probably know And then he know never came things. out with the Aftermath album. And there's no. a rumor that a lot of, the, I mean, this is a rumor, that a lot of the beats that ended up being on Get Rich or Die Trying were originally for Rakim's album with Dr. Dre. No shit. It started off with those beats there. So there Big Daddy, I think Big Daddy Kane was, uh, I, he might have been on this soundtrack too, but I know he was also on the Lean On Me soundtrack. Oh, really? Yeah, he, was, he, he had the title track, Just Lean On Me, which he wrote on the way. They were like, he wrote, he wrote it in the limousine on the way to the fucking thing. Man. Yeah, he was going to lean on me soundtrack. That's an uplifting film. Yep. It kills your brain cells. <laughs> he said, they used to call me Uncle Joe, Joe Clark. Now you can call me Batman. Nope, straight up. 888-742-3345. Uh, let's go to Ryan in Toronto. Ryan, go ahead, man. Hey, Jude, how you doing, man? How you doing? Awesome, man. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, you know, I'm a big fan. Just wanted to say that. And uh, this first time calling, long time listener. And when you, uh, this topic, I had to call in. Like I'm um, I'm 48 years old, and this is this is what I listen to, you know, uh, Kool Mo D. Yeah, I, I think he gets slept on way too much. I think he like I I think that he was revered, but the problem was was like his style was his style his style sounds more dated than other. Like when when we play Rock M, you're like, okay, it sounds old, but it sounds like it sounds like someone that so, someone that listen to Nas listen to this listen to like you can kind of hear yeah, that shit yeah. Modi's right. Modi's shit was, is more like and his voice right. his voice is more he's he's got that old school voice too right. like where he's like I went to the hat store and bought yeah. a new hat yeah, yeah. I'm making statements <laughs> walking down the street yeah, with you, a placement you know when when that music comes on you know you hear a good song you just automatically it puts a smile on your face and you start you know nodding your head you don't even mean to you just start bobbing your head yeah you don't get that today well i mean young kids do we're just fucking old yeah maybe <laughs> I, uh, maybe maybe there's a modi song yeah i go to work this is when it started sounding like mc hammer era this is when you had pants that you could fly in. Genie pants. Pepsi commercials. Yeah, that's what ended up derailing his later projects was Teddy Riley got really busy. Is that, is that a song? <laughs> yeah, Teddy Riley got really busy on those next third albums. He couldn't get them. And then there's, a, there's MCs that like just came out with like one or two albums that like are, are my favorite songs ever, mm -hmm. but like I wouldn't put them up there. I, I, I didn't mention um, I didn't mention Cool G Rap, who I, that whole flipping shit. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I like to give Cool G rap credit for that. He really like, like you listen to Raekwon. Right. You can you can really hear G rap. G raps. Biggie. Print. I mean, Biggie had a big. G rap had a big influence on Biggie too. Yeah, big G rap. G rap's one of those artists. I had to go back and research. I just completely missed it when I was six or seven, I guess. But I had to go back and actually do some research on G rap. You yeah, know, I mean that's later on in my life. Well, yeah. Like train robbery is probably my favorite joint. It's just it's, it feels like you know Biggie's. I got a story to tell. It feels like you know by it, so somebody kills you, except for half a decade earlier. He also has one of my favorite stories in the Superhead book, <laughs> where he allegedly beats her, makes makes her, her uh, make a mistake. <laughs> allegedly. Wow. That's wrong. The, uh, another thing on this album that he did uh, that wasn't all the way common at the at this point, he on this album, uh, "Live and Let Die," he he put together uh, 
he put together a, a posse cut with Ice Cube and Scarface. What a lot of cats don't understand is like back in the day, like you had your whole album and that was it. it like these posse cuts were kind of a special thing. Right. And so for him to do a posse cut with somebody like Scarface, like the guy that's cool. running shit down south, and then Cube. And then himself was kind of a big deal. Like this song was like a big deal, and and like now we can't spend, I mean, we can't this, we can't spend time in the eighties without LL Cool J, right? Yeah, or That's even about, even like Face. Like I, you I, you forget that Face is eighties. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> almost early eighties. Yeah, this is actually this song is from the nineties. This is like ninety two, I want to say, but yeah, Face like Face is another one, another right. rapper. But he, I think he really bloomed in the 90s. That's why I'm kind of focusing. There's somebody I totally forgot about um, that I think deserves to be mentioned. Darnell. Yeah, what's up, Joe? Go ahead, man. Good afternoon, Justin. Hey, I was what just up? thinking, like, that duration of time between 85 and 88, you got to remember Slick Rick and then, and Dougie Fresh, when they did the show, that was like the transition period. That's the 80s transition from, like, disco. And then that whole, like, air drum sound came into play. And then everybody started getting creative with the music. They were a big part of that East Coast change, too. Because growing up in L.A., you got a lot of different vibes like that. And then all of a sudden, it just started coming different. And then the iced teas and stuff like that. So yeah, Slick I just Rick, wanted to throw that out there. No, that's, a good, that's a good one. That's a good point. Slick Rick was like, Slick Rick is, well, he's. He's 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 got a, a album called The Art of Storytelling because Classic album. he is known as the storytelling MC. Uh, Snoop Dogg does yep. uh, homage to him on his first album. Lottie Dottie. I thought that. Well, I didn't think that actually because I remember that actually children's uh, children's story. But uh, uh, Great Adventures of Slick Rick. That album was one of the first albums I listened to. But when I heard Lottie Dottie. On that Snoop Dogg album. You thought that was... No, no, so many of my friends thought that was just a Snoop Dogg song. They didn't even know it came from that Slick was, Rick before that. That was like, Lottie Dottie was like, it was weird. Like, Lottie Dottie was like one of the, um, you kind of, you just had to have that song memorized. Right. Where I was, like, if you didn't know, like, if you didn't know Lottie Dottie by heart, like, people would just, <laughs> yeah, turn that shit up. Like, this they was like... like the coronavirus. Yeah, they'd be like... Yes, it's the original human beatbox, uh, Dougie Fresh uh, and his partner. Which is, and this is another one of, another great fucking Ricky D. And he's actually British, too. That, he's actually yes, British. Yes, he is. He got um, deported for a while. Yeah. And Dana Dane put on a British accent to sound like him. So, like. Like, it's kind of interesting that, like, one of the illest MCs yeah. came from Britain. Right. Him and 21 Savage. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I still know the Snoop version better than I know this version, though. I'll be honest. It was weird. At first, I was kind of like, why Snoop doing that shit? You know what I mean? And then I was like, all right, He's I guess that's dope. cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> His is raunchier, too. Well, yeah. But, like, with your wrinkled pussy, I can't be your lover. That was, like, crazy to hear. Right. I was like, what is that? A wrinkled one? Does that happen? Most pussies are wrinkled. That's the irony. <laughs> I was like, are they in the pool too long? They got flaps and shit. Yeah. There's a lot of flaps down there. I found that out when I got my tongue pierced. <laughs> and it was just getting caught on fucking everything. I was like, yeah, hey, I pierced oh, my tongue. Man. I was like, this is going to really step up my pussy eating game. That interview still does numbers, man, when you're talking about... The, uh, Eat, eating the baby. <laughs> eating the baby. Yeah, I was gonna po send that to me. I was gonna post it on my Instagram. I'll send it to you. Yeah, let's go. Let's uh, let's let's holler at some folks. Eight 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 seven four two three three four five.